So we are back here in the assembly area, or essentially the stocking area, where all of the major structural components kind of accumulate before they come into the factory. What we're looking at here are various frames for different floor plans. You can tell pretty quickly which one is gonna have a straight frame, which is gonna be this style. This is gonna be your chaparral. Pretty much any of the chaparrals are gonna have this straight frame design. And you can see right here where you have a drop frame. So again, the drop frame simply indicates that you have a main I-beam frame, and then you have a frame that's attached to the bottom section of it right here. All these frames are gonna be painted black. Now, this is very thick, so that's quarter inch thick steel that kind of makes the front section here the overhang. You can see all the, the steel reinforcement and bracing that takes place in here. You can see that this model already has its front landing gear in place. Working your way back, 12 inch I-beam frame. It's hard to see it on camera, but that is a massive section. And again, it's attached to a 10 inch I-beam frame here. Very rare for the industry to do that. Some manufacturers absolutely go with a much, much smaller I-beam frame there. You can see that the suspension has not been attached to this unit yet. It does have the hangers for the auto leveling, but this is essentially what the frame looks like. Now I know there's a lot of factory tours of different products on YouTube, but my goal here is to go a little bit more in depth on what you're looking at. So you can see how the frame was designed, where your cross members are, why it's designed the way it is to hold holding tanks, to be able to hold some of the electronics and the things that need to be routed throughout it. All right, before we go in the building, I'm gonna stop here and take a look at some of these axles. You have different axles for different models that they have. In front of me are their 7,000 pound axles. You can see how these are specific to the Brookstone, but they put 7,000 pound axles on a lot of the Chaparral products as well. What you need to understand about axles and a question I get asked all the time is why are certain axles on certain RVs? So if you have a, a, an RV with a 16,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, why would you put 7,000 pound axles on it? Because of course 7,000 pound axles equal 14,000 pounds if you have two of them. Keep in mind that you really only have about 65 to 70% of the weight on the back axles at any given time. When you fill your trailer up to its maximum gross vehicle weight rating, you're still taking about 20% of that and putting it on the back of the truck. Look at it this way. If you have a car or a truck or an SUV, if you had all of the weight of that entire vehicle just on one axle, you would be overloading that axle. That's the same thing when it comes to RVs. They have to make the front of the RV relatively heavy. So when they manufacture these products, they make sure that a significant amount of weight is over the front of the fifth wheel where it's gonna to attach to the tow vehicle. When we prototype our units and weigh our units, um, even though CSA uh, strives for, um, they want us to stay within 15, 25% uh, hitch weight guidelines, we strive to be in that 19 to 21, so we've narrowed it up and, and defined our own um, uh, parameters a little bit tighter than what theirs are. Uh, we, we believe a fifth wheel should be a little bit heavier on the hitch. We want to make sure that, you know, for the most part, our units have 2,500 to 3,000 uh, pound carrying capacity on these units. You know, when you look at the unit, you almost have to add the hitch weight to your axle rating. So, you know, let's say we got a 2,500 pound uh, uh, hitch weight. So you're looking at what 7,000 pound axles, you know, 14,000 plus 2,500, you know, you know, not the opposite. So, um, you know, there's a little misconception, you know, out there on, on when you're looking at the thing, because, you know, the when you stand there and look at the uh, a fifth wheel sitting there, um, all that weight is not directly on your axles. And I think also the thing to realize is not everyone does it that way. There are some people that manufacture fifth wheels and toy haulers that go right up to the maximum capacity of their axles. And I've noticed that coachmen, especially in their Chaparral and their Brookstone line, don't do that. You manufacture a fifth wheel that is well within the carrying capacity of your axles and when everything is said and done, when you factor in your pin weight, you are taking a lot of weight off of your axles and in most cases, your 7,000 pound axles are actually a little bit of overkill um, versus what you would need to put on there. Yeah, you know, you'll, we've got floor plans that we actually uh, derate. Um, 
you know, we've got floor plans that if we wanted to put a full-blown GVWR on there on, on full capacity, uh, you'd see higher capacities, but it would mean that there's a carrying capacity of upwards of, you know, 5,000, 6,000 pounds that for safety reasons, uh, we derate um, so that uh, the unit's going to be well within the capacity of, of axles, wheels, um, and so forth, but we also feel it's going to be a lot safer for you know the customer. Yeah, and you're not ever supposed to really drive around with full tanks, right? You're not supposed to have your, your gray and black tank full when you're driving down the road, which all counts towards your GVWR as well as people and people don't ride in fifth wheels. It's just not a safe thing to do. So those are all factored in, and I just wanted to point out and answer that question I get asked all the time. Why are axle capacities so close to gross vehicle weight capacities? It's because the axles are never designed to bear the entire load of the fifth wheel. When they can, that's great. And the Chaparral, the 360 IBL we have is awesome because we have twin 7,000 pound axles and a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds. And I think that was more because, you know, if they can put a 7,000 pound axle on there, let's go ahead and do it. Even if it helps us have that extra headway that people kind of perceive that they need. This system is actually a pretty good system, especially because, again, the heaviest Brookstone you're gonna see is gonna be under 16,000 pounds. So you'll be well within the specs of what a 7,000 pound set of axles can do. Correct.